When you're looking at a family lineup, one thing you want to compare is the overall size, especially when it comes to SUVs, because sometimes, well, they don't measure up or, well, they're just too big. Hey, welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now, this week, we get in the Jeep family lineup, specifically the 2017 Jeep Compass. Now, where it lines up is kind of the small one in the totem pole with the Compass first, then the Jeep Cherokee, followed by the Jeep Grand Cherokee, a nice evolution of three vehicles. I've driven the Jeep Grand Cherokee and even the Cherokee several times, so diving into the Compass here for the first time, I truly wanted to see how it measured up. Now, specifically, the Grand is obviously the bigger vehicle, measuring in about 189 inches overall, about 16 to 17 inches bigger than what you see here on the Compass. Now, obviously, the Cherokee version falls somewhere in between. Now, what I like here on the uh, Compass really is the outside. Now, first starting with the two-tone. Now, this is the first look I've seen in this lineup. Now we've seen it on other vehicles like the Land Rover and some other upscale models. So this two-tone effect definitely mirrors what you see on that. Now the outside is a small SUV, typical, got some lower cladding. That's gonna help with the ground clearance we'll talk about in a minute. But body color, pretty much all the way around. Just a hint of chrome. Now this is unique because typically the chrome focuses around the window area. Here, it actually goes all the way down, really giving you a visual all the way down. The vehicle matches up here on the rails, but otherwise chrome is somewhat subdued from the profile. So looking at the numbers, which really is the true storyteller here when it comes to these three lineups. Now starting with the Compass, again, the overall length is about 173 inches. Now it's gonna fall about 10 inches shorter than the next one, which is the Cherokee. Now compared to the Grand Cherokee, which is 189, obviously again, that's about 16, 17 inches shorter than the big boy. Now another number to think about really is as you scale down, it's gonna make life so much simpler when it comes to the, well, drivability of this vehicle, especially in urban settings. So when you get into tight city dwellings, a vehicle like this really comes in handy. Now, the overall width is just around about six feet, height about 64 inches, so really not bad, especially getting in the parking decks. And all that comes quite well, even considering you have a decent ground clearance, which I'll compare in a second. Now, as for wheelbase, you're gonna find about 103 inches here on the Compass. It stretches just a little bit more there for the Cherokee, around about 106 inches. But for the big boy, that's gonna creep up to around about 114 inches overall, which is gonna give you a decent footprint. Now, now let's look at the ground clearance. One thing to look at for any Jeep is the, the four corners. Now, this is the four-wheel drive off-road prowess that pretty much all Jeeps should come standard with, but of course, there's options, the four by two or whatever. Now, there are also Trailhawk editions, this one being the limited. Now, with all that, comes variations when it comes to wheel size. Now the standard is 16 inch, but there is 17, 18, 19 inch versions, all depending on which model you go with. Now another feature that's not standard is also ground clearance. Now one thing I like is even on the standard, that's gonna be a 7.8 ground clearance. As you step up to a four wheel drive, that's gonna be around about 8.2 inches. Now if you go to the Trailhawk Edition, you're gonna go nearly eight and a half inches. Now it's great ground clearance and of course, off-road worthiness. Now, what goes along with that, of course, is coupling it with this lower rubber fascia. That's really gonna help protect, of course, the body paint, minimize scrapes and dings, and of course, remind you that this is a Jeep and, well, you can go off-road. Now, swinging around to the grill warfare here on the Compass, and one thing that was interesting is really the profile from the side. And what I noticed is the smaller vehicle or the Compass looks more like the bigger Grand Cherokee than the one wedged in the middle, the standard Cherokee. And really, the difference is right up here at the hood. On the Cherokee, you're gonna notice that it really nose dives in. Looks like a little bit more sloping here on the front end. This smaller version actually looks like the big boy. Kind of looks like a downscaled version of that one. Now, what I like with that is, of course, the grill warfare. Where you're gonna see that is right across the middle, the good old standard Jeep grill, body color all the way around. And we are bringing some bling up here from the sides, that chrome really setting off the grill with some high polished black. The headlights, really huge lens, barely wrapping around just a little bit here to the side haunches. Now, as for flare, you get it just a little bit as you sweep down, some more chrome and a lot of airflow through the middle, but not as big, broad, open grill like you experience on bigger vehicles, but nice and scaled for this model. Really is the ingress into any vehicle, making life, well, so much easier and, well, less cumbersome by keeping the key fob out of your hand and keeping your pocket and the compass delivers. And where the deliver really is with the intuitiveness. Now, obviously to lock it, simply press that button, but when you come up to it for the first time, simply put your hand here, it knows you're there and pull on the handle, easy to get inside. 
One area that really always talk about also is security at the fill up. A lot of times the vehicle's locked, this is gonna be locked, but not here on the compass. Unfortunately, the fill up area is always unlocked. And this is just one level of security. I prefer to always have some type of release here for this. Now, one big benefit is the fact that it is capless, making it at least one less step when you're filling it up. Swing around to the business end, the cargo area for an ESUV. This is one place the vehicle has to deliver because after all, you can carry the people, but can you also bring their gear? And this vehicle does quite well. Now, first looking at the design, what you're gonna see is again, mirrors the bigger Grand Cherokee. The back end and the front has that same silhouette, really keeping it nice and straightforward versus other crossovers that are adding too much sculpting and curving and just look awkward. This one looks nice and regal. And where it starts is in the extended roof line, a modest spoiler here, huge bank of glass, and some of the accents we saw in the profile, like this chrome sweeping around to tie in. And of course, the lower fascia continues around here. Otherwise, body color all the way around and just modest chrome here at the back end. Now, as for safety, there is a backup camera giving you nice bird's eye view of what's back here as well as backup sensors. Now, one thing for ingress I always talk about is really the rear hatch and this one is powered, making life, well, a little bit easier. Simply press the button right here and it's gonna rise to the occasion. Now, once it's up, what you're gonna notice back here is decent cargo. Now, what's interesting is this has about 27 cubic feet. That versus the next model, the Cherokee, which has around about 24 cubic feet. Now compared to the big boy, that offers about 39. Obviously, this one does quite well. When it comes to horsepower on a smaller SUV like this, of course you expect, well, a smaller engine and well, that's what they deliver. What we have here is a 2.4 liter Tiger Shark inline four cylinder engine. Now it delivers modest horsepower, around about 180 horses and 175 foot pounds of torque. Now the engine is coupled with various transmissions, specifically in the four wheel drive. If you go with the automatic, it's gonna be a nine speed automatic transmission. If you want a manual, of course, that's gonna be in the four by two, either in a six speed manual or a six speed automatic. Now, one thing we did notice is it does have that auto start on and off, and that seemed a little clunky on this model. And I'm not a big fan of that system because basically it's always activated and you have to manually turn it off every time. And what does that mean? Well, anytime you get to a stop position, the engine shuts off. As soon as you tap the gas, it's gonna kind of crank up and get going. Now, it didn't hesitate at all, but mentally it felt like it did. So when I pull out in traffic, I don't want any hesitation. I definitely wanna hit the gas and go. Climbing inside the compass this is one area where all of a sudden I thought it was actually the big boy, not the smaller sibling because, well, the leg room numbers definitely delivered. And for my six foot plus frame, this is one area any small SUV can feel, well, somewhat tight, but this one, definitely upsize in this area. Now, what you're gonna find is around about 41 inches of legroom for the front occupants. For the back seat, which is the best number, around about 38 inches. That is a minimal difference, especially for a vehicle like this. Now, what I also like is the overall width. Nice hip room, and they even had room, of course, for nice elbow support here, and even better elbow support here. Of course, electronics are key, so let's take a look. First thing you'll notice front center on the dash is a huge oversized touchscreen system, the Uconnect that we're familiar with on a lot of the Chrysler vehicles, really houses everything under one screen. And when you see something like this, it pretty much means it's gonna minimize the overall clutter of the dash, put all the buttons and functionality right here where you need it. Now, what I like for this model and the update to the Uconnect is basically the responsiveness. And where it works is basically when you press it, you'll see that hexagon kind of emblem pop up. Really gives you that feedback that, hey, I pressed it, it knows what I'm doing, it's feeding back. Now that, of course, matches down here with the shortcuts. And these shortcuts really give you everything right where you need it. The climate controls can all be up here, really front and center, and that's a minimal look down when you're looking at the screen versus the climate control that's a lot further down the dash. But everything's right here, right down to the apps, all the functionality, I gotta love this system. As you sweep down, this is the minimal buttons I was referring to, really starting with the stereo, nice symmetric volume and tune select. This gives you a little bit of operation, but again, all this is nice and simple. Leaves room for, for some other functionality like the parking assist and uh, lane departure system over here. Really minimizes the overall look. As for climate, again, you can refer to the screen up above or have these items down here. Does have dual uh, temperature control, really dial in your specific uh, temperature, relate to the screen as well. 
huge fan select, which I'm a big fan of, makes uh, transitioning with your fan speed so much quicker. And your mode select button is positioned here on the knob as well. Now this is something other vehicles are really cluttering their dash with, when simply you can put the mode select in this area. Everything else, nice and simple. Now looking at the area a little bit in front of the gear shifter, this is the four-wheel drive system. Now I'm a novice when it comes to this, and don't take the vehicles off-road that much, but this system makes it, well, so easy to understand. Just a simple four-wheel drive lock on or off, and a dial-specific knob that, well, allows this novice to, well, pick what we're driving in, and it can't get any simpler. Now when it comes to connectivity, you're gonna find a USB connection over here, auxiliary jack, and of course a power supply and a modest, well, coin holder because that's not gonna hold the devices like our big phones with that small of an area. Earlier I talked about the engine and its auto start, auto off kind of feature. Well, one button you wanna know where it is is right here, which can disable that feature, allowing you to always hit the gas and go when you're ready. This vehicle has a lot of big features, the interior volume and, well, this huge glass up above me. And what I like is it really opens things up, specifically hidden by this screen. Now, once you open this up, it really lets a lot of glass in here. And one of the biggest features is really just this first part alone. This can truly open up and make this small vehicle, well, feel like a convertible. Otherwise, you can just let a lot of light in here and, well, let the sun shine in. Climbing inside the second row, we talked about the amount of leg room, about 38 inches, and it gives you decent comfort, even for my six foot plus frame. Now, one thing I do notice is that the overall seating is a little bit lower than I'm used to, which means my knees are up just a hair, but really the overall comfort is quite nice. This bench seating back here is quite cushiony, really gives you a little bit of give, not too hard, and look at the leg room numbers on this small vehicle. Also to boot, nice elbow support, and this is elevated cheaper vehicles, cheaper accommodations. Really take this, set it on the cushion. This one's nice and elevated, even has two cup holders. Lastly is airflow. Even on a small vehicle like this, you gotta get air back here for your back seat passengers. They put them here on the back of the center console, but they're not low to the ground, but instead elevated just a hair and even better, you do have a full power outlet and a USB connection when you need it. Now just for this additional road warrior and a test drive behind the wheel of the 2017 Jeep Compass. And where this vehicle truly measured up is, well, fitting in the lineup quite well. Again, the starter kit for the Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee. But again, from the profile of the outside, it mirrors kind of the bigger sibling. And where we noticed it had great cargo and decent interior volume. So it definitely fits into their family line quite well. Now as always, like thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.